Hey there, in this video I'm going to show you how to build the simplest birdhouse ever out of about $2 worth of wood. This is an incredibly easy build, so if you've been trying to get your start in woodworking or maybe you have kids that you want to get involved in the shop, this is a great first project. You need only the simplest, cheapest tools, and I'm going to show you how to do it every step of the way. So the tools you're going to need for this project are a tape measure or a ruler, a hammer and some nails of any kind, about an inch long is good. Here I have some finishing nails. You need a pencil, you need a saw of some kind. Here I am using a circular saw, but you could use a jigsaw or a hand saw of any kind. Even a pack saw would work. Uh, and also you're going to need a drill, and that's just to make the hole in the center of the birdhouse. Two more tools that are gonna make your life a lot easier but are technically optional are a clamp or two of any variety, and that's just to hold the wood down while you're cutting it, and a square of any kind. Uh, this is definitely worth buying if you don't have one already. They're super cheap. They make good right angles and 45 degree angles and you're going to be using both of these in building the birdhouse. So the wood that I would recommend using for this birdhouse is a single cedar picket fence plank. This is square on one side and dog-eared on the other side. You can buy these from the big box store for about two bucks. They are roughly six inches wide and about a half an inch thick and they are about six feet long, but you're only gonna need maybe four feet of it for this birdhouse. Cedar is a great choice for a birdhouse because it is naturally rot resistant, insect resistant, it'll survive outside without any finish on it for a couple of years at least, and once you start cutting into it, it smells really good. So we're gonna start with cutting out the sides of the birdhouse, which are six inches wide and four and a quarter inches tall. Make sure you start on the squared off end of the cedar plank, not the dog-eared end, and make a mark with your measuring tape four and a quarter inches from the bottom. If you have a square, like I do, you can use it to reference against the side and draw a line across, and that's just to help you guide the saw. If you don't have a square, you can make a mark at four and a quarter here, four and a quarter here, and just connect it with a straight edge. So now that we have the first side marked, we're going to go ahead and cut it off. And to do that, we are going to clamp this piece of wood to the table. And an important tip is that you want to clamp it with the cut mark fairly close to the edge of the table. If you try to clamp it and cut it all the way out here, the wood will vibrate and it is not quite so stable. So clamp it right about here. Pretty hard, so it doesn't have much room to move. And a pro tip is that if you're going to use a circular saw or a jigsaw, which has this reference edge, what you can do is line up where you want the cut to be, and you can hold a speed square or clamp it down, which is what I'll do, and then you can ride the edge of the saw against this square, and that'll guarantee you a nice straight cut. Another important point is that when you're using power tools, you should always be wearing ear protection and eye protection, and especially if you have kids in the workshop, make sure they're wearing these too. It's good practice. So I'm gonna mark out where I want this cut to be. And I'm gonna go actually clamp my speed square in that place just to help me hold it still. And cut it off. Side one done. So you can see that my cut actually isn't quite up next to that line, but that's okay. The actual height of the side doesn't matter. What's more important is that the other side is the same height. So that's why rather than measuring both sides and cutting them out, I measured one, cut it out, and now I can line it up at the bottom of here, grab my pencil, make a mark, and this is how big I want the other side to be. Now I have my two sides, and they are exactly the same height. Perfect. All right, with the sides cut out, the next pieces we need to cut out are three pieces that are each eight and one half inches long. These will make up the two sides of the roof and the bottom of the house. So we're gonna go ahead and cut out those three pieces in the same way that we cut out the sides.
So now that we have the two sides, the two pieces of the roof, and the bottom cut out, we need to cut out the front and the back of the house, which are identical but are a little different from the others because they have the 45 degree angle in them. So to cut out the front and the back, we're going to start by measuring four and a quarter inches. Make a mark. And now is when it's useful to have the 45 degree square because you can place it on the edge, line up with that mark, and draw a 45 degree angle across. Now if you don't have a speed square and you are using a six inch wide piece of wood, what you would do is you would measure four and a quarter inches on one side, you would measure 10 inches on the other side, and you would connect those with a straight line. We're gonna repeat this process on the other side of the board to make an X. Now we just need to cut out this X, which we can do in three cuts. For these smaller pieces, it's a little harder to clamp the square onto it because there isn't enough room, so I'm going to eyeball it. Should probably move this clamp. So to finish cutting out the front and back of the house to make sure they are the same height, I'm going to use the first piece that I cut out, line it up, make a pencil mark, and cut to that line. Looks pretty good to me. So at this point, all of our pieces are cut out. We have a front and a back, we have a bottom, we have two side pieces, and we have our roof pieces. And the way that we're gonna combine the roof pieces is like this, with side to side. And what that means is that this side is going to be longer than this side because you add the width of this and the thickness of this board. So what we need to do is make a cut along the side of this to make this board a little narrow to account for that thickness. So we don't actually need to measure the thickness. Uh, what we need to do is place these boards on top of each other, line them up, and make a mark. And that's what we're gonna cut off. Now I'm gonna clamp this to the edge of my workbench and just cut this out by eye. So the last step before assembly is cutting the hole in the center of the front of the house. So what you should do is measure the center point, and since this is about six inches wide, the center point is about three, let's make it here. And how far up and down the house you want to make the circle is up to you. You know, the center of the circle right there seems pretty good. And to cut this out, I'm going to be using a Forstner bit, which is one and three eighths inches wide. Uh, you could make it wider or smaller, it's up to you depending what kind of birds you want to live in this house, but you don't want it to be too wide because then predators can get in like squirrels or larger birds. If you don't have a nice Forstner bit, you can use a hole saw, these are a bit more common. Uh, if you don't have one of these, you could even just drill many small circles around the perimeter and just punch the thing out. It doesn't have to be a clean circle, the birds aren't really going to care. When you are drilling through this, it's good to have some scrap wood underneath it 
This way, when the bit punches through to the other side, you can go into this scrap wood rather than your table. And also, it prevents the wood from chipping out around the edge of the circle, so you get a nice clean circle on the inside as well. So you should drill from the outside of the house pointing inwards because you're gonna get the cleanest circle on the side that you start drilling into. You can see we've got a clean circle on the front and even a clean circle on the inside, but in this case, that doesn't actually really matter. And now we can move on to the final assembly of the birdhouse, and for this, you're only going to need a hammer and some nails. I'm going to start with the assembly of the roof, making sure that the shorter piece is pressed up against the inside of the longer piece. I'm going to put about three nails in this roof just to hold it together, and I like to start by hammering in the nails about halfway to the longer piece before trying to hammer them all the way into the shorter piece. All right, roof accomplished. Now I'm going to attach the sides to the back of the house or the front, doesn't really matter. And when you're figuring out exactly how to align the front or the back with the sides, make sure that the bottom is flush, that's the most important part, because this whole thing is going to be sitting on a flat piece of wood. For the other side. That looks pretty good. Repeat the same process for the front. So there's a bit of a knot here, which is going to be hard to nail through. So I'm going to move down a little bit and put the nail beneath it. This side, you can see it's not aligning exactly right because there's a bit of a warp to this wood, but you can force it in and secure it with a nail. It's looking pretty good. Now we can attach it to the bottom. It's gonna look like this. I like to line the back of the bottom up with the back of the house. That way I can attach this to a wall or I can have it free sitting somewhere. And plus having the bottom stick out to the front gives a nice place for birds to stand because there's no peg or anything underneath this for them to stand on. Now it's a bit precarious balancing this on the peak of the house, so be a bit careful here. You can provide some extra support with your other hand and hammer gently.
All right, we're almost there. The last thing is to attach the roof. And again, make sure that the back of the roof is flush with the back of the house if you plan to mount this up against a wall. Otherwise, you could center it. It's really, it's up to you. And for the nails in the front, it's a little tough, but you want to line them up and make sure that they're going into the front of the house. Check. Yes. And there you have it. You have completed your birdhouse. You have prevented a bird from being homeless, so you can feel pretty good about yourself. And hopefully, you learned something along the way. Thanks for watching.